Hello, winter friends, and welcome to another episode of Ryan's Cooking for Weebs. Long story short, I have recently been inspired by uh, the video game Monster Hunter Rise to try cooking something that is called Dungo. And what that is, uh, to my knowledge, is a traditional Japanese snack treat. And I've done it a few times, so uh, I kind of know what's going on here, and I'm not going to screw it up, which is great, uh, because I feel like at least a couple of my kitchen adventure videos have been uh, ended up in screw-ups, so hey, here's to that not happening again. Anyway, this is a very simple recipe. Anybody can make it at home. Uh, you just need to grab like three ingredients, uh, maybe more depending on how wacky you want to get. But uh, yeah, three, two or three ingredients really is all it takes. I myself found a recipe from a website. I will put it on screen right here. And because I know you're not going to stop to type that web address into your browser at some point, I'm just going to link to it in the description below. If I forget to do that, yell at me in the comments, please, and thank you. Our first ingredient is a two-thirds cup of non-glutinous rice flour into the bowl. Our second ingredient is a one-fourth cup of glutinous rice flour into the bowl. Our third ingredient is a quarter cup of simple sugar. Once again, into the bowl. Now that we have all the ingredients in the bowl, mix, mix, mix. We'll just give it a little stir, a little mix, kind of woof it all over the place because I mix too hard and forget that flour and sugar just fly everywhere as soon as you, literally everywhere. Okay, I lost about a quarter of my ingredients by uh, mixing too heartily, but that's okay, it's uh, whatever. It's fine, it was probably an even amount of everything, so not too worried about it. Now the recipe that I linked to uses slightly different uh, amounts of these ingredients. I've tweaked a little bit myself to what I think works a little bit better than what they've listed, so this is kind of uh, my own thing here. Not really, but sort of. Now that everything's mixed a little bit, we're going to put in some water. Hot, hot water. Start mixing that in with everything else. Very gently. I probably should just use a bigger bowl, you know. It would be smart, wouldn't it? So, obviously it's not something I'm going to be doing. The recipe says it should have the consistency of an earlobe when it's on the right. I don't really know if... I don't know if that's your little consistency, but... I'm just gonna pop in a little bit more water here. Recipe calls for a cup, but I don't really use the whole cup. Gets a little too soupy and definitely is not earlobe consistency when you use that much water. So now that she's good and mixed up, time to pop her in the microwave. Probably not really the traditional Japanese way of doing it, but uh, works for me. Two minutes, 30 seconds, let's go. This is the hard part, it's getting it out of the hot, hot bowl. Because this stuff retains heat very well. It's not fun to touch immediately after the microwaving. I mean, not a lot of things are, but. Here we 
go. Alright, that's a pretty good looking pile, if I might say no so myself. Goonies here. So now comes the fun part. Or, ow! Hot, 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 hot. You just kind of knead it over and over and over until. Ow! Hot! It's very hot. It's very hot. But yeah, just knead it over and over until you've got a nice stuffed ah, bridge. <laughs> so you got a nice soft squishy dough. And I guess we'll jump ahead uh, once I've done enough kneading and it's cooled down a little bit so I can actually touch it. So, alright, so after what should be 10, but probably was more like 5 minutes for me because I'm impatient, you end up with this kind of bouncy gooey ball of uh, nice kneaded dough. And from here, you really just want to kind of roll it out into an even cylinder. At least this is the way that I find it easiest to do it. Because from here, you're going to do a little bit of chopping chop. And it should be chop into three almost equal sections. They're pretty close. I, for somebody who just eyeballs it, I'd say I did a pretty good job. Just going to be cutting it in half again. I think the recipe wants you to cut each section into three, but I do two because I like them big. I like big balls, you know? Okay, so there we go. We got two nicely sized and rounded balls. Yeah, mostly. This one's a little bit off, but it's fine. So we'll put these off to the side for the moment. Oh, not knife time. It's not knife time yet. Because what we're gonna do... I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna flatten it out a little bit. I'm gonna add some dye. Because what fun would this be without colorful balls? Everybody wants colorful balls in their life. And I've found that the best way to evenly spread the food coloring through it, though, know, is to just go crazy with the kneading again. It's not it's really like a, you need another 10 minutes of it kind of situation, but the first time I did this, I did not need the food coloring in, and it came out all swirly and weird and stupid looking. And just overall, not very satisfying. At least, not in the way that it could be. Everything else, Chomperoo. And look how nicely that red is distributed. You can see a little bit because I kind of half assed it, but you can see a little bit of a swirl here and there, but it's, it's pretty good all. All said and done. Then we just roll the red balls back into shape. Nice even spheres. And then we take the last blob, squish it down, and add another color from coloring. This one's gonna be green. Because red, white, and green is the traditional way to do it, so why would I do any differently, hmm? I'm all about the Japanese cultural tradition. And during the coloring process, if you so choose, you can also add flavor to your dongo balls. Uh, I've tried a bunch of different things, like chocolate, grape, peppermint, uh, mango, peach. It's, uh, you know, as long as you Put the right amount of flavor in, it's not bad. The peppermint ones I made were way, 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 way too pepperminty, even for me, and I love peppermint. But uh, 
Yeah, I used just a drop, and for this small amount, it's still way too much. But anyway, we got the final balls complete. They are looking beautiful. So we're just gonna line them up here, like so. And then we take the skewer. Oh, they're so soft. So supple. It'd be so delicious. Just drive it in. Take a second skewer. Drive it in. And there you go. You're done. You've got delicious dango snacks. They are quite a treat. Mmm. Mmm. I mean, yeah, it's just sugary rice, but it's so good. I don't know what it is. It's just so good. I could eat these all day. So there you have it. Easy recipe, minimal ingredients, minimal time, minimal effort. It's very easy to make. Very delicious uh, little snack to make. So I highly recommend trying it out for yourself. And I highly recommend trying out different flavors too, since you know we've got all these little balls. Why not try putting something in them and uh, see what you can do? You know, make something good. Whatever floats your boat, get your crank turning. Uh, other idioms. And that's going to be it for this episode of me doing cooking. I think it's a pretty good one myself. If just because these are delicious. But, um, yeah. That's it. That's all I gotta say about this. If you enjoyed this episode, please do feel free to drop a like. If you have made Dongo or I have inspired you, which I kind of hope I have, um, you know, leave a comment. Tell me if you plan to make some yourself or if you have made them before, or what kind of flavors you really like to make, you know, stuff like that. Just let me know. I'm interested. I'm always up for another good idea. But most of all, thank you very much for watching, and we will see you next time. Bye bye